good afternoon, Year 5. Um, you haven't got me in a picture in this one, I'm afraid. I'm just using my voice in this one. Um, we've got quite a big lesson today, uh, but we'll get through it all together. And I think it's an absolutely fascinating subject that we're going to be looking at today. Uh, so I put a picture of a white rabbit up there and that's for two reasons. Number one, it's the first day of the month and I always say white rabbits on the first day of the month. But number two, it does actually fit with what the lesson is about, which is understanding and comparing life cycles. And we're going to look at all sorts of different life cycles today. First of all, can you name any classifications of animals and by classifications I don't mean um, species so I don't mean cat or dog or rabbit or parrot or haddock or anything like that I mean actual classifications I'm going to start you off with mammals so the first one is mammals now there are six you are looking for including mammals so you're looking for another five so pause the video now and see if you can think of any. Don't worry if you can't, because the answers are going to come up, but just see if you can. OK, here are the other classifications. Now, invertebrates, that means uh, something that doesn't have a backbone, that has um, maybe uh, an exoskeleton instead. But sometimes you might hear them referred to as insects. I prefer to use invertebrates because it covers things like spiders, which are arachnids. Um, so otherwise spiders wouldn't fall into any of these categories. So I prefer to use the term invertebrate, but you might sometimes hear insect. So we've got mammals, fish, amphibians, birds, invertebrates and reptiles. And other than the invertebrates, all the rest are vertebrates, which means they do have a backbone. But we're going to have a look at these. Uh, one by one, we're not going to look at fish today, but I have done the fish for you on the work you're going to be doing. So you'll see that later. Um, we're going to have a look at these one by one and look at their life cycles and try and compare them a little bit to each other. OK, so first of all, let's look at what a life cycle is. Now, every single one of those animals that you saw, including humans, which are mammals, um, have a life cycle where they are born. They get older, older, they get bigger, and they might then have um, offspring and reproduce. There are one or two very interesting animals that are slightly different, and um, we're not going to look at those too much today, but I'm sure some of you know about some of those animals because they are fascinating. But we are looking at, I would say, 99% of animals that do these things. So most animals, again, I'm using that generaliser most, partake in some kind of sexual reprodu uh, reproduction where you would need a male and a female. Not all. I mean, for example, in plants, we've looked at some plants which don't have a male and a female part. Um, and then some of those animals might lay eggs and some of them might grow offspring inside them. And we're going to have a look at those today. So let's start by looking at insects, or as I like to say, invertebrates and amphibians. We've got some vocabulary here. I'm going to say a word and I'd like you to say it after. So just listen and then say it after. Metamorphosis. Life cycle. Nymphs. Insect. Larva. Tadpoles. Amphibian embryos, pupa, and invertebrate. OK, I'm sure you know what some of those words are already, but there might be some new ones there for you. Let's have a closer look at some insects. Uh, now, this is a type of invertebrate, as we said. Uh, insects are creatures which have six legs, and their bodies are usually in three segments. Those three segments are called the head, the abdomen and the thorax. Uh, they usually have either one or two sets of wings. Can you think of any examples of insects? So just take a second to think whether you know any types of insect. There's one in the picture here already. 
I'm sure you could think of lots of them. Well done. So you might have thought of beetles, crickets, bees, earwigs, moths, butterflies. Most of these insects have four distinct stages of their life. And those are an egg, a larva, a pupa and an adult. So we're going to have a look at a few of those in more detail. Uh, we'll have a look at a butterfly, but we'll also be looking at a couple of others as well. But before we go on, there's a couple of other things I want to say. Insects are cold blooded. They are cold blooded, unlike us mammals, which are warm blooded. Um, they often have an exoskeleton, which is a hard shell rather than a backbone. So on the ladybird, uh, ladybirds here, you can see this hard casing which protects them and gives them their structure. So they don't have um, a skeleton the same way we do. Their skeleton's on the outside, which is exo, that um, prefix exo. There are two types of um, life cycle that an insect may have. There's one called a complete metamorphosis. A metamorphosis is when something totally changes. There are two classifications of animals that we know of that go through a complete metamorphosis. And that is some insects, only some insects, and amphibians. And those are the two that we know of that go through a complete metamorphosis. However, some insects also go through what we call an incomplete metamorphosis. And we're going to talk about what those two things are. So metamorphosis are uh, some insects and amphibians. Incomplete metamorphosis are a lot of other insects. Let's have a closer look. OK, so metamorphosis is the way in uh, some insects and amphibians change in their life. So rather than just getting bigger and bigger, like humans do or other mammals, they actually change their form. And of course, you all know about an insect like a caterpillar changing to a butterfly. And you all know about an amphibian such as a tadpole turning to a frog down here. Actually, only 12% of all insects make a, make a complete metamorphosis that we know of. Obviously, there will be millions of insects that we still haven't even discovered. That means only that means 88 percent actually make an incomplete metamorphosis. And we'll learn the difference about those in a second. Only insects and amphibians are known to make a metamorphosis. So let's have a look at the life cycle of an insect. And here we've got a mosquito. A mosquito makes a complete metamorphosis. That means it totally changes its form. Now, because it's a life cycle, we can start anywhere on the cycle. But I'm going to start with the eggs here. Now, eggs are always laid for an insect uh, near a food source. Why do you think the adult would lay their eggs near a food source, like under a leaf, quite often underneath as well? It's because when the eggs hatch, they need that food straight away and they can't travel too far. Uh, so the parent will lay the eggs as close to the food source as they can and quite often underneath the leaf because that gives it a little bit of protection as well. When the eggs are hatch, they turn into what's called larva. And larva are kind of worm-like creatures. Uh, I'm sure you can think of maggots, caterpillars, lots and lots of legs and very wiggly. So those are the larva and larva are eating machines. Did you know that larva tend to eat their own weight in food every single day? Imagine eating your own weight in chocolate or food or something else every day. My goodness. But that's what they do. And that's because they've got a big change coming up and they need that food. So then a larva turns into what's called a pupa. And when it's a pupa, a larva doesn't eat anymore, or the, the creature doesn't eat anymore. It spins its larva out of silk or something similar to that. Sometimes it's something different. And inside that pupa is where the metamorphosis happens. That's where the magic happens. So at this point, they're not eating anymore. They've had to store all that energy from when they were larva, and they're using all that energy now 
to turn into a totally different creature. And that is called a complete metamorphosis. So when they hatch from the pupa, they are then the adult creature. And in this case, that would be a mosquito. And the adult is then ready, uh, if it's a female, to lay eggs and the cycle starts again. Let's have a look at a butterfly now. So a female butterfly would lay eggs like this one. This is one, a real close up of one. They look like tiny little beads attached to the bark of a tree or underside of a leaf. Remember, they'll be near the food source so that as soon as those caterpillars hatch, they've got an instant source of food. So when the eggs hatch, a caterpillar emerges. The caterpillar is the larval form of the butterfly. That means it is the larva. It's a caterpillar's purpose to eat lots of leaves. It grows larger and larger. And when the caterpillar matures, it attaches itself to a leaf or a twig. I think caterpillars are beautiful, even if they do eat your garden. And then the caterpillar would make a tough, shiny covering and their particular pupa is called a chrysalis. And that's the pupal stage. From the outside, it looks as if nothing's happening, but inside the caterpillar's body is transforming and we call this metamorphosis. Some of you might have seen if you've grown butterflies that sometimes you can actually see them wiggling about inside when they're ready to hatch. When the chrysalis opens, the adult butterfly comes out. When it first comes out, the butterfly is weak and damp and crumpled. It slowly spreads its wings to dry them out. When the wings have dried, the butterfly is ready to fly away to look for food and to reproduce and carry on the life cycle. Aren't they beautiful? I love butterflies. OK, we're going to watch another video together now. And this is a video of a Herculean beetle. You'll see why it's called Herculean at the end. Now, this does look a bit gross to start with, but bear with it. I'm just trying to work out how I can get. There we go. Bear with it. Looks a bit gross at the moment. Looks a bit like an alien, doesn't it? It's the size of a Polish sausage. Look how enormous this pupa is. Can you see what it makes its pupa out of? Yuck. Wow, isn't that beautiful? OK, we're going to have a look now at an incomplete metamorphosis. So if you remember, the, the ones we've looked at so far are complete metamorphosis. They make a complete change inside the pupa. But 
incomplete metamorphosis is different. With an incomplete metamorphosis, we don't have larva, we have nymphs, and there is not a pupa stage. So the egg turns into a nymph, like a creature such as a dragonfly or a cricket, and um, each time the uh, nymph gets a bit bigger, it sheds its skin, and it looks a bit more like the adult version. I don't think dragonflies look like the adult version at all, but that's because the nymph lives underwater. But something like a cricket does, and it looks a little bit like its adult version. And every time it sheds its skin, it slowly starts to look more and more like the adult. So it's an incomplete metamorphosis because it's not going through a full change like a caterpillar. Here is um, another short video to show you, and this is of uh, this is a dragonfly nymph, uh, which actually lives underwater. The, uh, the baby dragonflies, if you like, the young dragonfly like this, lives underwater and it hatches and then is ready to turn into an adult dragonfly that flies off. So just watch how fascinating this is. Oh, it's a bit stretched, sorry. And you see it breaking through the skin. Curls itself out. And finally, it's free, ready to spread its beautiful wings. Some people hate creepy crawlies, but I love them. I find them really fascinating. You know spiders don't bother me. OK, we're now going to have a look at amphibians. And if you remember, amphibians were the other classification that went through a complete metamorphosis. So they have a similar life cycle because they do go through this metamorphosis. However, it happens in a different way to an insect. Amphibians are animals such as frogs, toads, salamanders. So generally, an amphibian is a creature that can live in on land and in water but of course with frogs they do have to spend a lot of their time in water otherwise they will dry out so they can come onto land as well they are cold-blooded just like insects and they always start their life in the water let's have a lo closer look at some frogs which are a type of amphibian so here's the life cycle of a frog and to go from um, an egg to an adult takes around six weeks. Again, let's start at the egg stage. So you know that um, frogs' eggs are called frog spawn and they're laid in big clumps together. These tiny dots here are what we call the embryos, which are inside this protective jelly. The embryos gradually turn into tadpoles. And then when the tadpoles come out of the eggs, they hatch, they fight their way out and they've got that instant food source near them through the jelly. They will eventually start to grow two legs. And then they'll start to grow four legs. And this is when the metamorphosis is happening, because a tadpole looks nothing like a frog. But this gradual metamorphosis is happening, not inside a pupa this time, but they are changing. 
and then the frog's tail or the tadpole's tail is absorbed back into its body another great food source there as well it's got it takes those nutrients from absorbing its tail so this is when the real metamorphosis is happening until it becomes that adult frog and then the adult frog is ready to reproduce and the cycle starts again Here's some close up pictures of those. I'm sure you've all seen them before. An amphibian's life begins as an egg, which has been laid in water, usually with many other eggs. As the egg develops, sometimes it's possible to see the tiny amphibian growing inside it. You can sometimes see those embryos wiggling about, can't you? The eggs then hatch and the larval form of the amphibian emerges. Do you remember that word, larva? Tadpoles are the larva of frogs. You might have heard of a tadpole before. I'm sure you all have. A tadpole is what we call the larval stage of a frog. The larva quickly grows fins and gills so they can breathe and swim in the water. They don't look anything like frogs at the moment, do they? At first, the larva does not move a lot, but once they get bigger and their fins develop more, they become very active and hunt for food. After a few more days, the amphibian's metamorphosis from larva to adult becomes more apparent. That means more clear as the hind legs grow, followed by the front legs. During this time, the young amphibian will start to exit the water and breathe with their lungs. Even now, it doesn't really look like a frog, does it? During metamorphosis, the gills appear and so does the long tail fin used to swim until finally it's grown into an adult capable of reproducing. So remember that tail, the fin's there, but the tail itself gets absorbed back into the body. Let's watch a quick video that shows us a little bit more about uh, frogs turning uh, into, uh, tadpoles turning into frogs. These are different to the frogs you would have in your garden.
ended very suddenly, didn't it? OK, here's a quick comparison between the life cycle of insects and amphibians. So both of them, as you can see from the middle section of this Venn diagram, hatch from eggs. They both go through the process of metamorphosis, although, as we know, most insects actually go through the, um, the, process, the process of incomplete metamorphosis and both insects and amphibians are cold-blooded. However, insects are different because they develop into larva and pupa or into nymphs for the incomplete. Insects have six legs and many will develop wings. Amphibians will develop into tadpoles or something similar. They don't have a, um, a pupa stage. Almost all amphibians have four legs and many will develop gills. OK, what I'd like you to do now is pause the video and go on to um, back to the lesson where you'll find a Google slide. And there there's a sheet with six boxes that I'd like you to fill in. Now, the middle bit of that sheet is just a bit of fun. It's where we uh, somebody had a bit of problem drawing a hedgehog's life cycle and they decided that a hedgehog lays eggs. So that's just a bit of fun for you to look at. You don't need to do anything with that. But around the outside are six boxes. I filled in two for you. I filled in the reptile box and the fish box just to show you um, the sort of thing that I want you to write in them. But do read those two, please, so you can see what I write. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video and fill in the invertebrate and the amphibian section 
of the sheet and write what you can remember about them. So don't forget to use words like cold blooded, uh, lava, pupa, uh, metamorphosis. You'll need that for both of them, that word. If you're stuck, scroll back to the beginning of the video where you got the vocabulary words or have a look at some of the pictures to help you. When you've finished, unpause the video and we can carry on. OK, now we're going to have a look at mammals. We are mammals, human beings are mammals, and I'm sure you can think of lots of other mammals. There are some words here that we're going to have a look at, and some of them I'm sure you know, but others I think will be completely new for you. So I'm going to say a word and then you're going to say it back. Are you ready? Mammals. Life cycle. Gestation. Sexual reproduction. Species. Placental. Marsupials. Monotremes. Now, I will say today we're not going to look at gestation periods. We're going to do that in another lesson because that's a, an investigation that we can carry out. OK, so some general information about mammals. Mammals get milk from their mothers. They have backbones. They have fur or hair on their body, body and they are warm blooded, not like insects or amphibians or fish or reptiles. They're warm blooded. Each mammal goes through various stages of life. All mammals are born, grow, reproduce and die. Oh, now anyone that knows me will know that I will just melt with this slide. Mammals give birth to live young. So unlike amphibians and uh, invertebrates that we've looked at that lay eggs, mammals give birth to live young. When a mammal is born, you'll notice that it looks very similar to its parents, but smaller. There's no metamorphosis here. They are just small versions of the adults. Over time, the mammal grows bigger until it's fully grown. Depending on the species of the mammal, this will take varying lengths of time. As you know from humans, we say about 18 years. The young mammal will drink milk from its mother's body. And a fun fact, mammals are the only type of animal which produce milk. This is also where mammals get their name from, as the glands which produce milk are called mammary glands. So mammary is where the word mammal has come from. Once the mammal is fully grown, it will be able to reproduce. The young it gives birth to will then get bigger until it's also fully grown and so on. And the cycle continues. OK, we're just going to very quickly look at the three groups of mammals. You don't need to write about these on your sheet, but they're really fascinating to know about. So scientists have broken mammals up into three main groups. Most of them are placental mammals. But we also have monotremes, which are only two types of mammal. And then we have marsupials, which are all very distinct to Australia. So here they all are. Most of the mammals, as I say, that you know, will be placental mammals. And these are born, uh, prepared to continue their growth outside their mother's wombs. Elephants, humans, cats, dogs, most of the mammals you can think of. Marsupials down here, they're the ones that we sort of think of of coming from Australasia and Oceania and that area. They continue to grow, but inside mother, their mother's pouches after they're born, and they will emerge quite often fully grown from their mother's pouch. So examples of these are kangaroos, wallabies, possums, wombats, Tasmanian devils and koalas. Now we come to the fascinating group, and there are only two of them, monotremes. These hatch from eggs. How strange. So they're mammals but they lay eggs. And these two are the only two that are like that. The babies have to, have to hatch out of an egg before, they're prepared to, to, before they are prepared to continue growing outside of their mothers. So they are different to other creatures that hatch in eggs, like birds or like um, 
amphibians and um, insects because they don't go through a metamorphosis stage. Well, birds don't go through that either, but they hatch out as little versions of the adult. So we have the echidna, the echidna, or otherwise known as the spiny anteater, and the duck-billed platypus. And those are mammals, but they lay eggs. How strange. OK, very quick activity for you. Just pause the video and see if you can match the type of mammal to its definition. So pause now and see if you can do that. Did you get it right? Here they are. The placenta mammals were the ones born prepared to continue the growth outside of their mother's wounds. The monotremes hatch from eggs and the marsupials continue to grow inside their mother's pouches. OK, what I'd like you to do now is pause the video again and go back to your Google slide and now complete the mammal section of that uh, sheet. You don't have to write about marsupials and um, the other types of mammal, but see if you can write a general overview of mammals. Remember, they're warm blooded. They look like they uh, give birth to live young. They drink their mother's milk. The mothers produce milk from their mammary glands and the uh, baby versions look like a smaller version of the adult and they always have some sort of hair or fur on them. So see if you can fill in that slide, that section of the slide now and then unpause the video when you're ready. OK, we're going to have a look at birds next. So I'm going to say a word and you're going to say it back. So repeat after me. Life cycle. Bird. Chicken. Egg. Hatchling. Nestling. Fledgling. And chick. Now, obviously, on here, I've got a specific bird, which is a chicken. But we're going to use the chicken to look at all sorts of different birds. So here are a type of bird which you, if you're lucky, might have seen in your garden. I love these. They're one of my absolute favourite types of bird. These are called goldfinches. Um, they are absolutely beautiful birds and I love the splash of colour they have on them. Birds have a very similar life cycle to mammals because the young version does look like the adult but there is one key difference can you think what it is birds lay eggs unlike mammals who keep their young uh, their unborn young inside of them until they give birth but the parent bird will lay an egg to keep it warm so inside the egg the young bird is developing so not inside the tummy inside the egg and it's getting bigger until it's ready to hatch. Young birds are often featherless and unable to fly. And something I find really interesting is they have, chickens especially, have what's called an egg tooth, which disappears as an adult, but it's a special tooth on their beak which helps them break through their eggshell. As they get older, they'll grow feathers that look different to the ones they have as an adult. These feathers are usually short and make the young bird look very fluffy. It's sort of a downy feather, that one. We call it a down. The stage between hatchling and being able to fly is called the fledgling stage. The feathers will then be replaced by their adult feathers and the bird will be able to fly and reproduce for itself to make the next generation. Let's have a look at a closer, um, let's have a closer look at an ice cycle. So here we've got the life cycle of a chicken. Again, we'll start with the egg stage. Inside the egg is the embryo and there's lots and lots going on in there. Now, don't worry, the eggs you buy at the supermarket will never have a chick in them because they haven't been fertilised. The fertilisation process, just like um, in a flower, comes with the male and the female and the eggs you buy to eat have not been fertilised, so they don't have a chick growing in them, so don't worry. So if we have a fertilised egg, that embryo is growing inside, and then it hatches, and we have what's called a hatchling, and we'll learn a bit more about that in a minute. The hatchling then turns into a chick, 
and eventually the chick will turn and grow into a fully grown adult and the life cycle starts again. We're just going to have a look at some other birds because chickens don't really nest as such, not like wild birds in the garden. So let's have a look at these birds, which have got three different stages. So when the bird very first comes out of its egg, it's called a hatchling and they are very vulnerable and very dependent at this stage and very prone to predator attack. So the parents have to be very careful. Uh, the next stage is called a nestling. A nestling and that's when the bird still can't leave its nest and it's still relying on its parents for food and for protection but then when the bird first starts to leave the nest and think about flying it's called a fledgling so we have hatchling nestling and then fledgling I'd like you to read this paragraph with me are we ready most male birds, such as robins or chaffinches, are at their brightest and most colourful at the start of spring. They hope their fresh new plumage will attract a female. Now, male birds have lots and lots of different ways to attract females. Just look at these two show offs down here. This is a male pheasant. And you can see this beautiful plumage. The females are very dull in comparison, very brown and they don't have the colours. And of course, you all know the peacock and only the male peacocks have these beautiful tail feathers. Again, the female is quite brown and boring in comparison. But other male birds will do lots of things to attract females. They might perform special songs or dances and sometimes they build the female a nest. Um, that tries to and tries to attract her um, in uh, by building a beautiful nest that she might want to move into. There is even some birds in the jungle that will sweep. They're going to use a stick to sweep away the pathway and uh, create colourful things in the nest for the for the females to um, attract to be attracted to and enjoy. So male birds will do lots and lots of things to try and attract females. OK, the final uh, type classification we're going to have a look at today are reptiles. And we're not going to spend very long on reptiles because I've already done reptiles on your sheet for you. But just to compare them to birds, reptiles also lay eggs, but their eggs are usually soft and leathery instead of that hard, brittle shell you get on a, an egg, a bird's egg. So they don't have to fight through it as much as birds do. They don't have that bird tooth. When a young reptile hatches, it will look like its parents and it will grow bigger until it reaches its adult form to reproduce. So reptiles do not metamorphosize like amphibians do. And reptiles, if you remember, are also cold blooded. OK, I just want you to watch this video with me. Uh, which is about uh, a dog trainer. So she's going to talk about the life cycle of a dog, which is a type of mammal. And um, a zoologist, I think his name is Mike, it's been cut off, Mike Lindley, and he's going to talk about toads and frogs. So just watch this video to finish off. Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm here with Alison, who is a dog trainer, and a lovely dog, Floss, who has been very well behaved over there. Now, we've been talking today about life cycles. Life cycles are different animals. Now, I imagine you know the life cycle of a dog very well, Alison. Yes. Can you, can you tell us a bit about the, the, the life cycle? Um, well, when puppies are born, they're born live and they look like small dogs, only they have their eyes are closed and their ears aren't fully working. Um, they rely very heavily on their sense of smell, but they do have their ears, their four little paws and their head and body are very distinct. So you can tell they look like a little dog. Excellent, because I've got an animal here who, as a baby, looks totally different to its parents. Well, in this little pot here, I've got some tadpoles. Mm. Uh, these are toad tadpoles, they're jet black, and some are already starting to develop legs at the back end. Eventually, in a few weeks' time, these will grow all four legs, and their tail will become absorbed, and they will emerge as tiny little toads like this. This is a you know, tiny fraction of a gram in weight. Now, its mum, however, 
is much bigger. And she's scrambling around in the box down here to try and catch her up to keep her out of the sun. There she is. This is mum. Gosh. That's how big mum is, and that's the size of her offspring. It's a difference of 3,000 times. Now, if you think about people, if when I was born, my mum weighed 3,000 times more than me, I would grow up to be three times the size of an African elephant. It's rather large. So it's a huge range from the baby to the adult. But you try and work out the life cycles of some other animals, birds, insects, things like that. We've had a mammal and we've had an amphibian today. Okay. Hi, I'm Mike. Right, what I would like you to do now is to go and complete the bird section of your uh, Google Slides. And if you've learnt anything new from the, um, the video you've just watched, you can add those too. But remember, those were a specific type of ma mammal and amphibian there. But I'd like you to now go and um, complete the bird section. Now, one thing that I didn't say earlier is that birds, like mammals, are actually warm blooded. So birds and mammals are the only two classifications of animal that are warm blooded. All the rest are cold blooded. So that's something you can add to the birds. Um, once you've done that slide today, you're done for today. Well done. I thought this was a really fascinating lesson. It was quite a lot to take in, but a really interesting lesson. So you can um, hand in the lesson and send me that Google slide back to have a look at. On Thursday, we've got a live science lesson together um, where we're going to start drawing our own life cycle of a specific animal together. Now, what I want you to do in pre pre preparation for that is for the rest of um, reading this week, um, apart from Friday, so Tuesday, tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday, I have set on Get Epic loads and loads and loads of books about life cycles. Now, I do not want you to read all of those because there are there are lots of them. So please don't. But what I'd like you to do is have a look through and see if any of them take your fancy as an animal you would like to learn a bit more about and maybe just read that one or two books about that animal. And then you can do some of your own research too. But remember on websites, check that those are for children. They're websites for children because uh, websites like Wikipedia are too complicated for you guys. They're too complicated for me most of the time. So I think they're probably too complicated for you too. So when I do a search, I always put um, maybe the life cycle of a koala for kids or something like that. So I know that it's hopefully looking for children friendly websites. But there's lots of books in Get Epic for a good start. I'll explain more about it in reading tomorrow. So go and finish that last bit of the sheet now. And I look forward to seeing all your work. Well done, guys.